So I am in Statesboro, Georgia, which is about an hour from Savannah, Georgia. And this is a town pretty close to where my father was born. Um, so this, this is going to be a little bit different video. It's kind of going back home. Um, so my dad was was born in a town called Porto, Georgia, which is about 400 people. Um, really, really small town and in rural Georgia and a lot of interesting experiences. And this weekend, um, my family had started a museum down here um, in an old schoolhouse. And this school um, called the Will Hill School was started, you know, a few years after slavery by former slaves, which were um, my ancestors. And so descendants of those original founders of the school, we bought the school, not the original building, but the school um, over 20 years ago. And this weekend is, is really cool because they're having an event um, called Taste of Struggle, where we're having um, some chefs come in that are very familiar with the cooking during slavery time and they're going to be cooking using traditional methods and um, just kind of telling the story of some of the um, meats and foods and style of cooking that we now call soul food. And, you know, for me, it's kind of really a particular interest for two reasons. One, it's my family and their museum hosting this event. And two, with my wife and I owning a soul food restaurant in Cincinnati, Ohio, this is going to be a fascinating trip, just really kind of discovering those roots of where some of the our famous items that we have on our menu come from. It's going to be really fun. I'm actually going to be helping the cooks that are, or the chefs that are preparing this meal, I'm going to be helping them with um, some prep work and whatever they need in the kitchen. So I'll be able to observe some of these traditional techniques. Um, some of the cool things we'll be doing is cooking over an open fire. I think we have a whole pig we're roasting and also a goat we're roasting. Um, so back in Cincinnati, we all got deep fryers and ovens and all that, all the modern conveniences. It'll be really interesting to see some of these other techniques. There is nothing like rural Georgia. It's I remember these places growing up. So early this morning, they looks like they started the fire already. We're gonna check that out. Then we're gonna head over to the kitchen and see what they need prepped on. How you guys doing? Oh man, looking good. So they said the name is Albert. Yep. <laughs> Poor Albert. And they actually, he's done a whole hog, not whole hog, a whole cow. On a barbecue pit. Yeah, How big is that pit got to be? His father made the um, The pit. It was one of those where it, Right, because... Oh my, how many people... It would probably take a couple to turn a cow. Yeah, and, and that... And they were arguing about how to be able to turn the right, cow right. and not have it touch the ground or touch the coals at all. You know, he was a farmer, so farmers pretty much are like engineers. Right. Like, I mean, you you got to figure this out. out. Uh-huh, exactly. You got to figure it out. All right. So right now, I'm prepping some of these beets. So we're going to be cutting the... Uh, the beet part, the root part, into fours, saving the greens. And uh, really funny, the one of the chefs here is actually from Trinidad, which is fascinating since my wife's family, who started Richie, is, is from uh, Trinidad. So, got to do an introduction. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, I am Chef Cheryl Henry, formerly from the Twin Island of Trinidad and Tobago. And, uh, and then what else you want to <laughs> go Whatever. She is a phenomenal chef. She does a lot of private cooking, private parties. 
and for us she's cooking an amazing soul food feast and right now we are preparing the beets all right i just finished chopping up the collard greens and in the oven we have your famous oh, candied, candied yams, yams with a secret spice secret, secret spices, spices. Delicious, delicious food. The Willie Hill Heritage and Renaissance Center, right. 4235 Willie Hill Road in Portland, Georgia. Hey, man, how about that? <laughs> and the steam comes out. See the steam? You see, got the hole in there? That steam come out. Right? And then you, then you iron your clothes. Here, feel how heavy that is. Can you imagine ironing your clothes like that? Ain't that heavy? That's heavy, ain't it? If I was gonna iron my clothes with this, I would need to be you need to be strong, that's right. You sure would. Okay, what you do, you put milk halfway, you put ha halfway of the milk, and then you just you keep going up and down, going up and down like that. Say, churn, butter, churn. Churn, butter, churn. Here comes Johnny at the gate, waiting for the butter cake. Churn, butter, churn. Churn, butter, churn. That's a butter churn. Um, how long would it take to make it? It would uh, take you anywhere from, that's a good question, anywhere from uh, uh, one day to two days, depending on how long, You'll how long be doing you want this for until two you get days? tired. Yeah. Turn, turn, turn. Turn, brother, turn. Would it take turns to do it? Yes, ma'am, you can. I think that I know what that is. I think that was an instrument. Yes, that sure is. Yes, well, I'll tell you what, what's your name? Selena. What is it? Selene, okay, brother Selene, that's exactly what it is. It's a, it's a, it's an instrument, it's a shaker rate. See? Oh, I, 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 I that you wanna try? All right, finished prepping the beet greens. Did the collard greens earlier? Check out the beet greens, all prepped up. And over here we have the actual beets. We've just they've been roasting in the oven for probably what 45 minutes to an hour, or longer. Longer than that. Maybe a couple of hours. Maybe an hour. Yeah. So it's very tender now. And then here we've got the collard greens. We're good. <laughs> Roast it, beet. Did you put anything on it? The technique for that was, I prepped those beets and that's why they taste so good. <laughs> We're gonna check out the, the outside cooking. I wish you guys could smell this. It smells really, really good. They're roasting a pig, roasting a goat. And the other cool thing is they're dressed in the period garb. And I'll let you check all that out. And there's gonna be some storytelling and some history and all of that so real cool so this is a georgia southern georgia delicacy called boiled peanut you gotta try these oh you're real good these are smoked i never had them smoked i've never had them smoked you had them smoked Oh, these are real good. Uh, Miss Calersa is doing the reenactment and period garb in here. We've got some stew cooking. Well, this is uh, a very special day. Uh, the Willow Hill Museum is offering a taste of struggle, which is about food ways and folk ways of a formerly enslaved people. So we're going way back cooking a whole hog over an open pit. We are cooking a goat, curry goat, as well as roasted goat. Hopping John in a pot, and we are cooking chicken, smoked chicken, smoked beets, collards and mustards cooked together. We are gonna have a wonderful, wonderful time. In fact, my stomach, even the even when I say even when I say the food, it's like where 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 where. <laughs> Tell me about the, the Willow Hill Heritage and Renaissance Center. And about yeah. the history. Well, the Willow Hill Heritage and Renaissance Center was organized in 2005 
in the old Willow Hill School. The Willow Hill School, founded in 1874, was one of the first schools in Bullock County for African Americans, found nine years after the Civil War. There have been six school buildings, and this is the sixth one, which uh, is an equalization school. It was that school that was built during the 50s to delay integration of African Americans into white schools. And the schools were not integrated until 1965 when I was one of the first students to uh, integrate the school. So this museum is an opportunity for us to preserve a piece of American history with a focus on African American history because a lot of African American history is not in the books. And it's what we call archival silence. The archives and the books are silent on our history. So we must tell our story. And there's an old African proverb which says that the lion will tell a different story from the hunt. And so therefore, we gotta tell our story. And we're happy that folk would come here. Uh, we have the Bennett Grove School. We have a lot of archives inside on the Blue Hill School, the States for High Industrial School, a primitive Baptist exhibit. We have a slave exhibit. We have, in fact, two boats that we recently got from Ghana, Africa. So this is a good day as we are outside enjoying nature and demonstrating to many of the young people many of our ways, our historical ways. And, uh, and, mmm, I smell that food. It smells so good. Can't wait. You heard it. So that's my dad, uh, Dr. Alvin Jackson. He's pretty interesting guy. He's lived a lot of different lives. But uh, here, he is the historian, the curator for the our family museum and this is something that's really near and dear to his heart and there the museum is putting on this uh, taste of struggle event where we learn about the history of some of the soul food items that we talk about. Here you go. Yes sir. Yes sir. So what's the secret of, of, of doing something like this? The secret is on it? It's slow cooking. Okay. You can cook it too fast. The meal is thin, it's gonna be cooked, the hams are not gonna be cooked. Mm -hmm. And it, it, some of the outside will, it, when you do it fast, when you slow down and just, just add the coal, let it cook slow, it's gonna cook all the way through. Now it'll look like it's done on something till you cut it, you're gonna see blood. <laughs> and it ain't done, cause some people cook it too fast. What's the, what's the key for the flavor? Get well, the we flavor. got a special sauce that we use. Mm -hmm. And to keep the moist in, I use like salt, pepper, and uh, White distilled vinegar, and that helps season it. Mm. How much longer you think it has? Uh, I'm just got the fire front of them hams back there. Uh -huh. I'll say about another hour. Just to make sure. Cuts out everything, the front ham, the shoulder, everything else is done. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's real good. Oh, that's real good. We'll make it our mustard barbecue sauce. You know what? You you want to taste it? I do. Okay. Is it is it done already? Or is it still cooking now? It's still cooking. Yeah, but we're we're getting closer to the taste, uh -huh. so we're trying to decide what else is needed. And check out my uh, it's my older sister. She's also a doctor called Dr. Jackson. And we've got some demonstration. How you doing, sir? I'm good. How you doing, All right. sir? What are you, what are you, what are you just, got going on? I'm, I'm capturing uh, am, video. Am I going to be in, in Hollywood would, somewhere? Would, would you like to be? Freedom is a must. If you ain't got freedom, you ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. <laughs> That's a contract, that's it. Where did I sign the contract? <laughs> right here, this is cotton. Right. Before he goes to the gym, you can touch it, it's got the seeds on it. The school, it's the Willow Hill School that my father was speaking about. 
It was started shortly after slavery. This is the sixth school. Um, and inside, we have a museum. The one thing about the rural South, it's hot, very hot. A lot of times there's not a lot of AC and it isn't like Florida or California, the coast where there's a breeze. There's no breeze, it's just hot, very hot. They did it to educate when they are out there. They will do what they call a dirt scrawl. They were right in the dirt. If somebody came by the shoot, I don't know what's going on. They mix it up so no one knew what was happening. But then some are so powerful that they'll get beans, seeds, nuts, and marbles and make the shapes of letters and numbers out the beans, seeds, nuts, and marbles. And again, if somebody came by, they mix them up so no one knew to make sure they still would educate their own. See, some of we give up on this story because again, we have bought into the story of the hunter, not understanding that they are elephants. Each one of us are here, we've been ordained to be here, and we each one of us have missions and purposes in our lives. Yes, right. Yeah. Though some people might try to fool you and say you have only one purpose, that is a lie. You have purposes in your life. You are multifaceted. So when we talk about the first known multi-talented genius in the world, out of Africa. Yes. His name is Imhotep. Engineer, philosopher, doctor, writer, advisor, scientist, out of Africa. His story lives within each one of us. And that when we feast, we feast, and I tell people that some of us have some shame about some of this right here. We have some shame, and then I say this in particular to African people. You have some shame about a fruit that was a fruit of independence. But then, when you don't know your story, you run away from it. We say, say world war, fiend not. Sankofa Ayinke. Who do in you be crime? Go back into your past and reclaim your story. Your story is not lost, just misplaced. And you can reclaim it. And love will always find its way home. We are here to celebrate food ways and folk ways and stories of a formerly enslaved people. So this is a, a history and a food way that goes way back to the days of slavery. And yet, we are preserving it. That ball makes instant hot water. I lived in Charlotte for a while, and we're talking about the blacksmith at a, um, it's an urban house from the, um, Civil War era, and the guy there who was a blacksmith, like that, dip, dip, um, the Dutch oven down there, that's a lodge. And these two here are from, these are actually African because they have the, the longer legs because um, iron was discovered in West Africa. The guy, though, who was there, who made his stuff by hand, because, you know, like lodges, they may use hydraulics. Yeah. His stuff was perfect. It looked better than Lodge. It was just perfect. Absolutely perfect. Does it cook well? Oh my God, yeah. This is the thing. The re-seasoning is not as hard as people think. No, it's not. But I think the people who are going around saying it is because they want it and they want to convince <laughs> their relatives right. they don't want to do it. Right. And they're, they're just probably something to right. say. Yeah. So they, yeah. Yeah, they make it a big deal. experience um, really glad I came down saw my family but also to experiencing some cooking I haven't seen before but you hear about the uh, old time cooking and cooking on fire so many amazing experience food is delicious it's been uh, really cool just got interrupted by a thunderstorm a crazy rain. Well, I think today was uh, a very important day. It was uh, spirit-filled. Uh, there was a lot of learning. 
There was uh, connectivity to the past, to the ancestors, and I could feel the spirit. And I do believe that they would have been very proud of us and what we sought to accomplish. This taste of struggle brought together a very diverse group. There were Caucasian people, there was African-American people of different ethnicities, there was Caribbean people, all of us coming together in one voice, giving honor to our people. The food was delicious, it was excellent, it was the cuisines from time long gone. So I feel great, I feel happy, I feel empowered, I feel that even though the, the blessings of God allow the rains to hold off until the food was complete and then the floodgates of heaven opened. So yes, we had a wonderful time and it was wonderful because uh, it brought my son Jelani from Cincinnati. We got a chance to see some really good southern cooking. I um, was really impressed by the whole hog. Uh, it tastes amazing. And the uh, roasted goat. Um, Hoppin' John is really like beans and rice. Um, everything was good, the greens. Really also impressed by the beets. I just wanna get in here. Uh-oh, that's brother-in-law. Right Uh-oh. Yeah, this guy, he's go what are you gonna do with that goat, goat head? Or not the, the pig head. head? The pig head? Oh. Yeah. Let me tell you, I'm about to make some snoops out of it. I'm about to put an old uh, Midwest twang on it, um, cut it down the middle, chop it down um, in fours, and then um, put a little barbecue sauce on it with a little lemon. I ain't gonna tell you my whole secret, no. but that's called Snoops for you, for the people that don't know about it. You'll All right, it. you heard it from him, Snoops. So we got we gotta take some pictures of that, see what that looks like. It was a great event. Um, I was really impressed by the beats. The beats were roasted to perfection, added some rosemary. Um, I'm not really a beat guy, and I was super impressed by that. But overall, amazing event. It's great to see family. And get to kind of reflect on the heritage of Southern cooking and soul food cooking that is present in our restaurant. So amazing experience. And uh, yeah, nothing more to say. <laughs>